What's up, everybody? It's your boy Oops. And of course, we're back with the homie Kai. And we together are back again. Once again. Hope you guys are doing great today. And uh Yeah, I hope I hope I hope everyone's hanging in there. Because I know it's been a pretty weird week. Pretty tough one for a lot of us fans, especially in the Dragon Ball community. And uh yeah, obviously, first and foremost. Uh, before we get into our usual chapter review, since that's what we're here for this week, because unfortunately I was not able to get together with Kai last week to put an episode together because I was in the midst of my move, which was not very far. I'm still in the same state, still on the same side of the country. So, But a move is a move nonetheless. A lot of packing, a lot of lifting, a lot of soreness. Um, but Kai, really quick, how, how are you doing today? How are you holding up? Not bad. Definitely not bad. Um, you know, could be better for multiple reasons, including the uh, recent news. Yeah. But I'm good. How about you? How How is your move now that you're all... Are you all settled? So, I'm, for the most part, I've been, I've been doing my best to really get as much as I can unpacked and, like, you know, put in its place. I would say we're a we're a pretty decent 70% of the way. Um, I actually had to buy more shelves, or I had to start buying shelves because, funny enough, when I got out here last year, I basically unpacked all my stuff and stacked it all on top of each other and put it away in the closet. And I'm like, why did I even bother? Because I never got shelves last year. <laughs> so I started getting some this year. I still need like maybe like one more solid good bookshelf and then I'll be all set in my room. And then outside of that is just more lights because why not? Um, but yeah, everything else is still a work in progress. Well, all right. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, guys, the first thing, first things first, before any comments, before any reviews or any thoughts, uh, we definitely wanted to put our our uh, thoughts and prayers our condolences to a legend because unfortunately we lost an amazing voice actor an amazing person more importantly in chris Ayers. um if you don't know he was the voice of the recent frieza and i say recent because the original frieza from dragon ball z is, is a different uh, actor actress i should say yep um and yeah, this this one pre hit, hit pretty hard just because of the fact that this dude is known to be a very, very awesome individual, a human being. He was pretty, I would say he was pretty close friends with our boy Geekdom. And I think outside of, you know, Chris's family, his girlfriend, you know, any of his other close friends, I, I feel like out of everyone else in the community, this hit Geekdom really hard, like really hard. like. I can I can I can think back to a time where there was some dumbass fan that was trying to say something negative again. Oh no, you know what it was? It was it was a stupid comicbook.com article. Like you know how they you know how they do that <laughs> shits where they just they just they just they just talk. You know, they just make up anything just for people to click on it and yeah. it's like top 10 whatever. Of course. They did a list for they did they did a list and and it was a terrible list nonetheless and they were talking mess about chris and boy was that not very wise because geekdom was already ranting all right then when they got to this dude he was like yeah it's like that is how that is how you got him to go super saiyan if he wasn't already okay because you don't insult this guy okay you just don't he's that he's that good of a human being that you would never even think to insult this man whatsoever i mean for those that don't know this dude was pretty much if i'm getting this right he was at 50 percent lung capacity when recording his lines for either the broly film or the resurrection f movie i'm pretty sure it was the broly film okay yeah so either way, this guy was literally on an oxygen tank just to perform. And look at the performance that he gave us. Stellar. So 
it is unfortunate and with a heavy heart that you know we have to you know bring this up and you know it's not like it's a burden or anything at all but it is definitely something that kind of can't go without talking about freeze as a character is a very 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 popular character in and of itself um so popular that obviously we've talked about frieza so many different times and the reason why they keep bringing frieza back is because of that popularity it makes perfect sense and to have the american voice actor pass so soon it, it feels like i mean he's he was 56 but still like i feel like that's still pretty young absolutely yeah so it's it really sucks um so i mean yeah that's that's i was very i was pretty sad when i when i when i saw that on twitter like as soon as it, as the news broke and i was like wow like his girlfriend wrote this whole nice post about how everyone all his loved ones were around him they had the good vibes on and they were there for his last breath and that hit home like super hard because like when my grandpa passed last year my mom was basically like right next to him like when as he was taking his last breath too so that shit it death sucks i hate death it is one of my most hated things in life that's obviously unavoidable but just because it's unavoidable doesn't mean i can't like it and i hate it um it brings about a lot of sad emotions um but yeah uh we'll never we'll, we'll never forget this man and uh you know whenever they do decide to you know re recast frieza when that time comes you know i'm sure whoever comes next whether they do a, a, a poor job or an amazing job we will always remember chris Ayers. yeah so is there any is there anything else that you want to add to that no um I mean, I was, uh, I was really not happy when I heard that. It's not like I was close to him or anything, you know, we weren't friends, but I definitely have a, uh, voice acting plays a big impact on just like me as a person and the things that I enjoy. And, you know, he was definitely one that stuck out for me. So it still hurts all the same. Yeah. But, um, I do think what you said was very well put. So I'll leave it at that. Yeah, honestly, like that's a great that's a great thing that you that you, that you brought that up. Like, like voice acting, and it's crazy, man, because we live in a world where we got a lot of dumbasses out there. That's true. People, a lot a lot of people that just really like to talk out of their ass, and part of that is the shit talk on voice acting in general, right? Like, because a lot of us, we of course in most most cases than not i watch the the anime nowadays especially in its original dub format in japanese but yes. then there's the amazing work that is done by the american voice actors that we know and love you know quite notably you know sean schemmel chris sabbath johnny young bosch chris Ayers. you know like the list goes on there's plenty of, of, of great voice actors out there that put on stellar performances for their characters that really measure up and they kind of stand on their own when in comparison to its original Japanese counterpart. So when we have a guy like like Chris who 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 did a voice for a character that is such a crucial character to the overall story of Dragon Ball like it, it hurts and it hits hard and you know that's a, it's a it, it's a voice like the, like like like, like I, I totally get what you're saying because like we we hear these people bring these characters to life because without the voices they're just animations you right. know what i'm saying so he's definitely gonna be missed i'll, I'll miss the hell out of him i wonder if they're gonna even contemplate on bringing back the original Frieza now or they're See, just gonna get someone completely different altogether I heard something about there was somebody else that um either has voice Frieza or don't quote me on that maybe he hasn't but I heard that there was um you know a VA out there that had a 
very, very, very good impersonation of Chris's Frieza. Yeah. So that makes me wonder, are they going to do that to try to, you know, mask the situation? Or would they do something like, you know, get the original chick back? Because, you know, in her own way, she was also a really good Frieza. Like the people that took on Frieza's role did their jobs flawlessly in their own in their own interpretations of what they think that this character would sound like because if you i don't know how many people can actually recall but if you go back and listen to z yeah you can hear after hearing the two side by side you can totally hear that it's two different people um but both of them just fit the picture you know yeah Mm -hmm. so well yeah i mean that's the beauty of voicing is like you know even when when a character goes through a, you know a, a certain amount i shouldn't say cycle but like a, a certain amount of voice actors that you know they take on the role for themselves they 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 add a certain like they they add flavors and layers of their own like um like personality and characteristic to that character and that you know obviously outside of like obvious audio cues it's what really makes a difference and naturally i mean i'm not even gonna lie i I don't have the original voice actress's name in front of me right now but that's the voice that i grew up listening to clearly and i'm sure all of us did to be honest right chris came in at a pretty dope time and he did an amazing job when he came in so it was really easy to get over the fact that that oh like they didn't bring back everybody you know what i'm saying like like when you got when you find someone that is able to perform at a level where you almost kind of low-key without you know di- no disrespect but you kind of forget about who was the last one that's how you know you got a, a, a great one on your hand yeah it sucks man it really sucks but Either way, whenever, whenever, you know, whenever we have to cross that bridge, I'm sure we'll be crossing it very soon because, you know, video games are a thing. The, uh, whatever else they decide to put out before the next English voiceover project takes place, we will most, more than likely find out, uh, then at that point, what will happen with Frieza's character for the American version, so... Rest in peace, Chris. We will miss you. Pauline Newstone. Oh, is that the original? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That was her. So before we go into the uh, into the chapter review to uh, to bring it back to our full power level, energy levels rather, should I go over uh, the, the last episode's comments first like we did the last few episodes? Yeah, that, that absolutely works. I do like doing them at the start. Also, apparently there were way more freezes than I thought there were. There's quite a list here, so that that might not be the right name. Oh, snap. Okay, well, yeah, this there you go. This is crazy. Yeah, I... Oh, you know what? Yeah, I think they guess they, they got someone different for oh, the you know who Kai I'm version, of? right? You know who I'm thinking of? Is this one? Uh, Linda Young. That That's uh, the one who I'm thinking of. Yes. that's is, That's the first one, right? I, I, I'm not going to answer that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to try to say that like I know. Okay. Well, that's fine because that is another thing that we take pride in. If we don't fucking know, we don't know. I'm not yeah. going to pretend <laughs> and I'm not going to act like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's oh, the yeah, one. That's her. Like, nah, chill. <laughs> yeah, no. Nah. Um, but anyway, yeah. So I'm looking at episode 27's comments right now. I'm going to go down this. Let's see what y'all were saying from, uh, YouTube says a week ago, but I'm not, I know it's two weeks ago. It was two it weeks just, ago, at least. Yeah. It, it must be like day based, you know? Yeah. 13 yeah, yeah, days, YouTube. still one week. Yeah. So this person says, you know, Dragon Ball was based on ancient Chinese mythology journey to the West. Um, uh, yes. I'm sure a lot of people know that. Um, they also go on to say Son Goku is Sun Wukong in Japanese pronunciation. Chinese monkey king Sun Wukong have similarities with uh, Hanuman, the monkey god of Indian from Hindu mythology. There is a game called Black Myth Wukong trailer. You should check out, check that out. Nice editing, by the way. Well, thanks. 
um but yeah that game i have actually already checked it out i reacted to the the few gameplay trailers and other types of uh videos that they have put out for that game on my other channel uchi games so if you're interested in that check it out that was uh I actually never thought that someone would actually just bring up that on this podcast. Have you have you have you uh, seen Black Myth Wukong? The oh, game? have I? No, I, I I nope, not familiar with it. So it does look really good. I'm not gonna lie. It is a fire looking game, and like this person said, uh, you know, it's based on Journey to the West, which of course Dragon Ball is also based on as well. So thanks for the comment, and thanks for the uh, compliment about the editing. Thanks um this person says the dragon ball hype in 2015 to 2018 was amazing hopefully it comes back at least for once oh, oh, oh you're telling me yeah <laughs> oh man you're telling me listen i'm waiting for the day where the internet breaks again right when they announce the anime return bro mm. What a day that'll be. A glorious day, nonetheless. It'll it'll be one of those like finally moments, but <sighs> hell yeah. It'll be it'll be nice. I don't know. I'm still kind of mad at Dragon Ball. Aren't we all though? I mean there's this again. You know, I don't feel like I feel like you're not a real fan if there's not something you're freaking mad about. You know what I'm saying? That's a, okay. <laughs> you know, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it goes, like. This guy, like, I've, I, like, the real, the real hardcore, like, you know, Dragon Ball fans, like, you followed it when you was young, you're still following it now, you pay close attention to a lot of the things that happen, you know, behind the scenes and whatever, you theorize, you speculate, all that, there has to be something, there's not a, I don't think there's a single fan out there that doesn't, that, that is 100% okay with literally everything they just, and there's nothing that makes them mad about anything or upset at least. That yep. is so unrealistic. I mean, I wish I was able to be that fan. Yeah, I, I, I don't think they exist, to be honest. <laughs> I don't think they exist. I don't think they exist, but... Um, and if but they yeah, do, I, they're I, an endangered species at this point. <laughs> endangered is definitely a great way to put it. Um, what else do I want to say about that? But yeah, it, I can't wait for that announcement. Because there's a few, I feel like there's a few things in life that really bring people together. And, and I mean globally, okay? For some reason, and this is the things that I've noticed in life, right? Pokemon, <laughs> Smash Brother trailer announcements, Stop. and Dragon Ball. Straight up. I don't, I, there, is no, there is nothing else that I've seen that has had a crazy of an impact as when because yo i think back to when geekdom kind of preemptively put it out there that it was coming back and he made a video and the and, and then and then the news spread like a wildfire and everybody was like yes it's coming back back again once again like everyone was hyped everyone was so happy based off of geekdom's word and nothing happened but the thing is he was it's not like he did it just because you know he has clout or whatever he has a report like he ha he's on the inside he knows people on the inside that tell him things that talk to him about these things and they're trustworthy resources and i can and i can tell you he's not bullshitting because i'm lucky enough to be one of the people that he trusts so there's things that he's teased me about that I predicted that when it happened, he was like, bro, you actually called it. And I am actually very surprised. And I'm like, oh, well, fuck, you know, like good shit, I guess. Right. But he knew from a very early, he's known for a long time already that like Dragon Ball, they've been working on, but it's just there's this weird like distant feeling between all of the people that are involved with it and and then i guess toei ultimately that's just like there's a disconnect where there's something that's not 
in place that is explaining the reason why Dragon Ball anime has not come back. It's odd. I have no idea what's going on. Yeah, no idea here. Either way, we have someone that says here, and since Battle of God CGI has been increasingly used, I believe the movie will have 2D aspects. Don't forget, a lot of the animators are still doing Dragon Quest Die. Very true. But are wanting to test how far they can go with CGI. We will see a lot more at Jump Festa in December to see the route it going. Until then, I'll reserve judgment and hope for the best. By the way, Goku and Broly are on Beerus Planet. Yes, and uh, they're definitely mo they're most definitely on Beerus Planet, and we're most definitely going to be seeing Broly for all of five minutes, and that's it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, come on. Of course, they're on. Like, it doesn't make sense to go anywhere but Beerus's planet. Yeah. Yeah, because like, why train on Bampa when you have right at your disposal? So you know, yeah. That's crazy. How that all well, that how how this is how things change over time in different ways. Like, yeah, they definitely have been uh, uh, testing the waters. Of, you should say with the cgi elements because there have been they, there was a little bit of that even in the broly film um there was also a little bit i'm sure in the frieza film as well and it obviously all started with this battle of gods back in what 2013 when that john came i can't bro damn seven years bro uh -huh. it's been seven years wow eight that's incredible <laughs> you said eight 2013 oh yeah yeah to be right. nine I can't. <laughs> that's nutty that's insane but yeah we'll, we'll obviously have to see I mean yeah they're definitely going to have some 2D elements it's just going to feel I'm, I'm sure for the majority though the movie is going to feel like we're watching a video game Loki I'm not hype about it I don't I'm done yeah like ah man the more we talk about it the less excited i am for exactly it. Like, like i was never hyped about it to begin with because i saw what they were doing from the very first teaser and i was like mm, this looks real sus and it's only gone downhill for me it's only gone downhill from there yeah like i'm not gonna lie like i'm the things that i'm excited for have nothing to do with the visuals Facts. like i'm i'm more excited with the story progression and what happens after like they already kind of said without fully saying it where this takes place it's completely obvious when it takes place but at the exact pinpoint moment that's on that's that's to be seen but i'm sure since you know they have the ability to do so i feel like whatever's gonna happen in this movie is going to have all its events take place whether it's whack or not and the last scene or during the credits or post credits is gonna be that damn world tournament is gonna be goku is gonna be oob and, th and then whatever happens after that is we're stepping into the grand tour if you feel what i'm saying hey mm. so that's Got that whole song but step into the grand tour mm. <laughs> i don't know how people hate it it's fire but whatever Whatever. I'm a fan. I don't lie. That shit was like, I was bumping to it then. I was bumping to it now. All right. I ain't gonna front. This person says, thanks for bringing up my comment. Of course, as long as you guys give us quality, we will continue to provide with that exact bit of quality. It was good to hear both your opinions on it, which I quite agreed upon. Also, Kai, wish you a speedy recovery, brother. Get well soon. Thank you. They also went on to say... As far as the movie goes, the animation did put me really off, not gonna lie. It's a downgrade from Broly. The CGI looked good at times and the mess at times. So will it be visually pleasing? Nah. But on the other hand, the plot really interests me. We uh, have grown up Dende. We got Corrin. We have the Red Ribbon Army back and also Broly. And we got Pan. They did say it's gonna be before the end of Z tournament, so I'm really hoping to see some ooh. I won't mind if they go OG Dragon Ball goof in action, but that's it. The only thing that is keeping this movie alive for me is the uncanny plot. So I hope they really pull off some crazy shit 
or else this movie might not live up to its super, super title. Also, shout out to Uncle Piccolo. Man, he is the real one when it comes to raising children, even though he had a shitty ass. T- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, no. we said a lot already about this topic, but yeah, it's pretty spot on, though. You know what's funny? You know what's funny? Namekians live far longer than humans, right? Mm hmm. And we have grown up Dende. I know where this is going. If we don't get those immortal <laughs> children the <laughs> fuck out of here, I'm really walking out the theater. <laughs> I'm gonna be so sick, bro. Boy, you know you're about to take your ass to the damn slushy machine, refill that cup. You gonna get your ass back in that theater to see what the fuck happens after. <laughs> Bro, I can't. Oh Pam really out here in kindergarten or some shit, and Goten and Trunks <laughs> gonna be in like second, third grade. Yo. <laughs> nah, yo, you know what would be really fucked up? If what? they had if they had Trunks and Goten in the same class as Pam. Stop. <laughs> that, dude, that would be a direct, like, fuck you guys. I don't care how inconsistent my story is. Y'all gonna <laughs> come pay for this shit anyway. That would be the biggest fuck you I'd ever see in the history of history. Like, wow, like that's OD. You're gonna, you're gonna go that far. I don't think that's gonna happen. But you're gonna come for these children's futures, like. Mm-hmm. But that was the pretty much the last la- uh, the last big comment that we have here um, <clears throat> on the on the comment section on the YouTube version here. And someone also said MHA collab. I guess that was in reference to when I was talking about bringing in uh, other discussions for other animes which I'm, we're definitely down to do um but yeah just give us some time i need to talk and to you about mha behind the scenes what, what do you mean behind the scenes like off off uh mm-hmm. off podcast mm-hmm. okay why because with it, right now this is dragon ball this is, you know we're here for the chapter review with a little extra extra but at the moment we haven't been doing other animes yet so if you want to record one for mha that's fine too but i'm just letting you know the moment this end i got some shit to say okay all right all right well do you think at a at a in a future episode like once you're once you're done recovering is something we bring up again we talk about it in front of the people oh yeah for sure all right bet so with all that being said, now it is time for the monthly review. Ooh, that's our longest li- intro. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> all that, all that discussion and everything. And now we're gonna get into the chapter review of Dragon Ball Super Chapter 77. Head to thewaypro.com and use my code Ushi10 to save 10% off the entire website. We gonna bust into this yo, yo, bowl of flapjacks, busting into this planet cereal. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, what? What are you talking? <laughs> I realized. Okay, I know what you're talking about now. Now I'm not gonna lie. Um, I did record a reaction to this. I at the time of this um, episode, I am still in the middle of editing it. Um, and the reason why, um, it's 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 it's, it's, it's done a lot differently because again. Um, for those that don't know, um, I recently moved, of course, and my PC died. Yikes. More, more, more specifically, the graphics card, right? Oh. So the whole thing, yeah, yeah. So, oh, uh, luckily, God. luckily, I was within warranty. So your boy hit up that freaking customer support. I said refund. Oh, yikes! <laughs> and I'm gonna get my whole everything I paid for, thankfully. So I will just use that towards a new computer. So I just got to wait for them to receive it. And then once they receive it, I will get that issued back to my account. And then boom, another computer will be on the way. So until then, I will, I am for the time being, I'm testing the waters on my old laptop that I used to do everything on. So this thing is already beat up as it is. So if I can't get that reaction out, you know why, but I, you, this is me telling you guys, you at least know. Uh, what would have happened, right? Yeah. So anyway, <clears throat> let's get on with this with this chapter. So, uh, Bardock, father of Goku. When I read that title, man, I said, "Ugh." Yeah, like that's. Oh man. <laughs> Instant. Ugh. Ah, let's go. I was hyped just off the title. We started with the bowl of cereal and what looks to be 
that looks to be right um granola's uh i don't know older nah i don't think that i don't think that could be older brother i mean that could be father or something he just he just got the face he got kind of the hair whatever holding up the kool-aid jar ha <laughs> yeah so the funny thing is his people like his race the cerulean's they seem to all have that similar like sniper type of thing we find that out later in the chapter yep. when a little tussling goes on that's their so that's their grade eight <laughs> red eyes yes exactly right so this story starts out 40 years ago planet cereal we see the namekians and the cerulean's living in peace they're chilling they're planting crops they're they're, they're sipping the juice they're sharing the juice they're sharing their kool-aid and their sick beats yes and then, of course, until one fateful night lit yeah. by the full moon. <laughs> and these dudes... You know, the funny part is, you feel... You think that it's it's literally in the... In, like, just out in the open in the middle of the day, right? And they have a full moon. Like, damn, what worse timing could y'all have had this? Like, that's crazy. They'd be planting crops at night, sipping, drinking, all that stuff. That's not the Having first time we've time. seen stuff like that in Dragon Ball, though. You know what I mean? Like, we we've yeah, seen it right. be we've seen it be you know completely sunny on one planet, you know, complete nighttime on another, multiple full moons. Like we've seen all types of crazy shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. I mean, then again, you know, this is the Star Wars of anime, but you know, they don't want to treat it like that. Like, <laughs> the potential, the potential, right? Anyway, so of course they get bum rushed by uh the saiyans <laughs> of course all them crops that they had planted destroyed and the the craziest part about it was like because of the full moon these dudes came out the pods as monkeys and i thought that was crazy so they also came off of like a freezer spaceship at the same time it wasn't they, it was just a mixture it was like sands and like frieza army people that was it that was like. very off-putting too just to see like the actual like frieza ship just there yeah. i was like really they're gonna just okay they pulled up heavy right right so and they didn't even have to right they kind of like berated the place they destroyed a lot they killed a lot of people it looks like they uh they yeah they killed a lot of people injured a lot of people it looked like their elder um namekian dude he had the dragon balls which we see the two right there and he passes them on to manaido and he goes you know what you must do right like here you go you're the grand elder now bye <laughs> yep so the cerulean's are trying to defend and fight off the saiyans they're having a really hard time and then we see Bardock on the top of a of a building. He notices a little boy running away, and what do you know? It's Granola. So Granola, he runs to a into what looks like some sort of house, probably, and he runs straight to the, his mother's arms. And in pure shock, because I mean. <laughs> <laughs> if, listen if i was granola and i seen a giant ape just like in my, like like he the hole is already through the through the ceiling there's no escaping out of pure shock this dude just passes out the Sweet. last thing he sees is a damn ginormous ape so man passes out in the face of great ape bardock all right but bardock don't continue with the attack because he peeps and at the same time while all that's going on the cerulean's are still trying to fight off this dude's name is flake right <laughs> i think that's pronouncing it right oh man i feel i, I think that is flake f-l-a-y it has to be frosted flakes Fro yo has mm. to be yo they better they better have a tricks character they better have a, a honeycomb, honey nut. <laughs> <laughs> they better have. They, they gotta have crisp. They gotta have cocoa crisp. Cookie <laughs> 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 crisp. We're gonna have to have all of them cereals in here. All right. 
Anyway. Wait, where, where, where my man 2K at? Dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where he at? Where's Tony? T O N N I. I. <laughs> anyway. I can't, I, <laughs> bro, I can't take this shit serious anymore. I just can't. Yo, but no lie, when I read that name, I was like, wait, what? Is <laughs> that Blake? What? Blake? Blake. Oh, oh. <laughs> for me, for me, it was something else that I read in the middle of this chapter, and I actually had to stop. I was like, I'm done. Okay, let me know when we get to it. Oh, I will. I bet. So, so this man, Flake, was told. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> he was. <t> <laughs> oh, my God. I can't, man. I can't. So this dude, all right, this civilian, <laughs> this cereal head ass, all right, no milk. No. <laughs> <laughs> he freaking was told to shoot for the moon. So he goes to shoot for the moon. And instead, uh, one of the other apes get in front of him and grazes his, uh, his, uh, forehead gives him a nice scar a little souvenir but he was still able to destroy that moon and lucky for them that was able to kind of stop all of them from being great apes and then they just kind of powered down to their regular saiyan states and uh this dude flake <laughs> he said oh we got him now now this is the now is this napa with hair that dude looked like Nappa. I didn't think about it like that until until you said it. I, I can see the resemblance, but no, nah, I don't think so. Yo, I'm telling you, erase that hair. That is Nappa. That looks like Nappa. So, they, but the thing, but yeah, Nappa, we didn't get confirmation. Nappa was always doing stuff with Vegeta, though. He, he was That's like Vegeta's true. personal like guardian. That is very true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I was confused because. I forgot about that fact that, yeah, that Nappa was definitely always with Vegeta. Nappa um, had a but... brother, Sleepsies. <laughs> <laughs> they had Nappa, Sleepsies, uh, Nappy. Oh, wait, never mind. That, no, that's him. Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> they had, oh, okay, Nappa's brother could be Night Night. Night no, Night. That's, yeah, just, you gotta, this one word, Night Night. Imagine now. Nah, okay, nah, I'm 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 done. I'm done. Never mind. All right, moving, mo on. moving on, moving on, moving on. Okay, so they take out this man Flake. They frosted his. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> <laughs> they frosted this man Flake, son. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Dude, I didn't think this chapter was gonna be this hard to review. <laughs> it's not even hard. It's just like it's hard to get through because of how funny it is. Right. Holy shit. Okay. Oh, oh. Okay. So here we go. So, we, so, so moving along. <laughs> all right. After we see this man busted in the ground, uh, this unnamed saying he goes, "Come on, leak. Let's mop up the." <laughs> Let's pop up the rest and get out of here. Oh man, they made this dude named Leak, son. <laughs> they have to. They, I, I, maybe this dude's name is Drip. Who, who called him out? <laughs> nah, we, we need we need the brothers. We need the twin brothers, Leak and Fleek. Leak and Fleek, and then and then the uncle is Mill. You put it all together, Meek. Okay, never mind. Anyway, we're. <laughs> We zoom in, going back to the scene of Bardock and Granola. Real, and real quick, real quick, right? Before okay, that. So I want to point something out. He said, come on, Leap, right? So that, mm. that, that's the dude that got his head scratched up. I'd like yeah. to point out, do you... No, actually, I'd like to ask a question. Okay. Because the way I see this is this freaking... I don't even know. I'm not even gonna try to come up with an insult. We've been we've been off track for too long. But like this man, we're going hard, <laughs> right? We we going hard. This this non fade having ass saying with his Ooh. head cut open. No fade. No fade. <laughs> Do you think that we will see him again? Whether it's in present time or in another flashback, 
And the reason I ask is because I feel like he was marked for a reason. I feel like it's been so many years and they had to put that there so that the readers can remember like, oh, yeah, it's, it's that one, you know? I feel like this dude uh, has to appear again at some other point. Okay, I see what you're trying to say. All right. Yeah, that's a very good question just because scars and marks of these uh -huh. kind they're very like de they're very uh definitive and they, they that's like a really important characteristic trait because like we're similar with bardock um he's got the cross on his cheek right? right and if you remember at the beginning of this entire arc we saw bardock for like a panel when they had the scene where the cerulean planet was getting like mopped up so that was our first tease that oh shit like bardock was on this mission are we gonna see bardock later in the chap er, in the, in the arc later down the line and what do you know boom he got a whole chapter named after him with a whole backstory involved right. so and what and 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 the best part about all of this is that if you don't even count the 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 story of Bardock special, and if you don't count, well, you have to count the Broly film because the Broly film is legit. like legit, and it takes from Dragon Ball minus whatever does all the retconning or whatnot, whatnot. This is like the first time in a very long time since like Dragon Ball minus that we're seeing like a whole story for Bardock. Be like like being played out yeah and that's amazing to me so to answer your question the, uh, it, it's possible okay it's possible that this dude leak may end up being like mm, maybe brought up again but it really depends on how his the rest of his future went because oh, of course if he if he didn't go back to planet vegeta like all the other ones did then there's a there's a good chance because just like with vegeta raditz nappa broly and and paragus those are like five known saiyans and goku so six those are like six known saiyans right off the bat that were not on planet when frieza destroyed it that those are the the sole survivors of the saiyan race right so if leak is still out there somewhere that'd be interesting um and it'd be kind of crazy because if if there's any if there's ever any like another character let's say the character is like masked or hooded but we see but you but, see the but, scar but, yes then we like oh yeah. it's Le is my, my ass leaking he's, he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's leaking look at the scar <laughs> So yeah, that, that's a good question. I, I, I'm interested to see if that does happen. But you know, like if it does happen, like what role is he gonna have? Because like exactly, this is also a time frame when Saiyans at this point were not like very feared. I mean, they were, but not to the extent that they are now. Like those that know, that keep up with Earth, they understand that there's two amazingly strong Saiyans that are beyond god level at this point literally and you do not mess with them like you don't so th there's anything else you want to add no no it was i just had i just that, that thought caught that thought crossed my mind when i saw him because you know he's kind of like picking at his thing like man and i was just like you know yeah. they don't give people scars for no reason and if they do it's gonna be someone that's gonna stick around for at least one more scene right right so we'll we'll have to see, right? So they they and then they cut to a full page shot of my man Bardock, dude. This is probably one of the cleanest shots I've ever seen of Bardock, bro. He had the Saiyan armor, tail out. He had a concerned look on his face, scar on the cheek, Goku nappy ass hair. I mean, I guess it's Bardock <laughs> nappy ass hair since you know he's he, he had it first, right? And he's just looking swole, right? And granola's mom sh takes a shot and tries to shoot him because she feels like he's trying to he's probably gonna try to kill her and granola and he dodges it and that's that's where she takes out half of his shoulder plate 
which is kind of like it's almost like this was a little nod to like the original design of yep, the Bardock one... Saiyan armor. Yep, for sure. I got that same vibe. I was like, oh, okay. Yes, yeah, son. Like I was like, oh, okay. Okay. That was kind of dope. Right? She grazes him, get leaves him with a little uh cut, a little blood dripping from or I should say leaking from his uh shoulder. And and then as soon as that happened, Bardock has a moment of self-reflection. And then we have a flashback within a flashback. He thinks back to when Gine was yelling at Bardock for missing Goku's birth. And she goes, Do you know? how long you have been gone for how many months it has been and he goes oh that explains why your tummy's flat again <laughs> so as badass as bardock sees it seems like it seems like he's, he's a lacking little, uh, in the old noggin yeah I mean, it's, it's nice to see where goku gets it from right and and that's and and see and this is the part where i'm just like man this is the shit that they need. We need more of. We need yep. more of this lore shit because think about how many times we've seen Bardock have some sort of interaction, right? This man, we always see him with the arms crossed, eyes closed, trying to keep to himself, conversations kept at a minimum. And then shit gets serious and then he goes and fights and then he dies because literally every time we see this dude in action it's for that moment in the saiyan history when frieza destroyed them all and that's not enough i want to see more of this where we see how they are you know like yeah on a regular day-to-day -day basis because clearly we we see now that bardock ain't just some tough ass looking dude this guy wasn't that smart either apparently he was a little he was a little airy you know, I'm not gonna say he's 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 as freaking uh, chicken out the bucket dumb like freaking Goku, but he was like, oh, that explains why your tummy's flat again. Like I could just hear him say that kind of like how Goku would say anything. You know what I'm saying? You gotta remember too. Not not only not only is he you know lacking upstairs, but he missed Goku's birth, and the first thing he can think of is that's why your that explains why your tummy's flat again. Let's not forget, Goku has an older brother. Mm. It's not the first yep. time his wife's tummy has gone back to flat. He still didn't get the memo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, no. That, hey, that's a good point, man. Goku gets... Listen, everyone likes, loves to blame Goku falling on his head for being the way that he but is. But that just amplified okay. it. Plot twist. That just... Ma Dude, that just makes me wonder, like, say he, say he never fell on his head and he, he tried to carry out his mission or whatever to destroy the planet. I feel like he would be more like his parents anyway. This, this kind of indicates that to me, at least. Yeah. Like he, like not all Saiyans are born savages is my point. You know, like there are some peaceful ones. There are some docile ones. There's ones that have that oomph to them, but but on the interior, they're they're softies or they have soft spots, you know? Yeah. That's shit that I like. There's soft that spots on their head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great way to say it. So moving along, right? We see we we we, we uh the Guinea says I swear do same men have anything resembling emotion? The little guys in the incubator back there think you can help me pick a name so and the funny thing is we we there's a shot we do see little rats, toddler rats right. over there and the, what's even okay and this is this is this is a little i could be just this is a stretch right these clearly aren't who who they look like they are but from this shot it looks like he's interacting with characters that look like kaba and that look like Pan from the new Super movie. Yeah, I was gonna say Pan. I didn't. I wasn't thinking Kaba. I was, but I I see Kaba now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So so Bardock goes to the incubator. We see little baby Goku. 
with a diaper on. That's a, that's surprising. They they usually just let them them shits go, you know. <laughs> this ain't the '90s anymore. Facts. <laughs> and then and then <laughs> and Gideon's like, "What's wrong now? You you've seen a baby before? Like Bardock acting all freaking freaked out. He's like, "Oh my god! Like I did that." <laughs> <laughs> like and then he took he takes a look at him and he, and he just goes Kakarot he's like well call him Kakarot she's like Kakarot sure that's a fine name grow up and grow up big and strong my little Kakarot so there was a nice little moment but I'm not gonna lie I gotta call this out the way I fucking have to call it out what made him think of that name in the first place it's lit. Carrot Top ah oh, see cause Okay, that does make sense because the way he looked at him, it's I like he knew. That, well, no, it's like the way he looked at him was like I figured like he was reacting the way that he was reacting because of how close in resemblance he looked like himself. Oh yeah, no question. He, that's what I thought, but then you know he didn't say anything, and then Guinea just said like, "Oh, like think of a name," and and he just looks at him again. And he's like, "Kakarot." Because, like, where does the name Bardock even come from? Like, is that another carrot top type of freaking vegetable or whatever? Like, yeah, I never looked into that. I don't know. Yeah, so that in itself is a mystery. But you know what? I'll take this over years and years of speculation as to why fucking Broly was crying in the first movie. Okay, I will oh take this my God. any day. That was, okay? uh, we're not getting into that. Yeah, please. We've done that plenty of times already. <laughs> So, flash forward back to the original flashback that we was in. Granola's mom is holding him tight, and Bardock's just like, she like sucks his teeth. And then here we go with Leek, our boy Leek. He's out here, Bardock, sir. He's like, we were looking for you. The mission's done, and we have orders to pull out. And Bardock says, is that so? You head home without me, Leek. I'm sticking around to check for survivors. Well, very well, sir. But try to be quick about it. Word is Freeze himself will be here soon. Bardock says, good to know. So then he puts the scouter on. And then he scouts around. He goes, these two are the last of them. And then he gets the bloop, 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 bloop. And he sees deep within the mountains a power level of five. Just an animal, maybe? It's like, no. The movements are too deliberate. This is something intelligent. So my man Bardock, he sees. When it comes to warriors and battling, that's where the smarts come in. They could be dumb as hell, but nah. The Goku's the same way. Like father, like son. Beautiful. I love it. So then we see uh, Manaito. And he's off on what definitely looks like a Namekian house. It's like a little like spherical in the ground. Actually, not going to lie. That's how all their houses be looking in Dragon Ball Universe. <laughs> Yo, low key. That reminds me of... Uh... You remember like Bobbity's spaceship that he like built in the fucking oh, ground? Oh yeah, that ugly thing. Yeah. <laughs> I do remember that, yeah. So he has the two Dragon Balls, he puts them in a jar. He has a staff. He's handed by the door. He tries to attack Bardock. Bardock catches the damn freaking cane. And he goes on the Namekian. And the funny thing is he brought along Granola. He's holding Granola by an arm. And I guess his mom was there with him too. Because your power level jumped to 213. Guess you can't can control it. Which explains how you managed to keep hidden. And then uh, Manaito was relieved to see Cerulean. He's like, I didn't dare to hope for survivors. And then this is where we get uh, Gr Granola's mom's name. She goes, I'm Mwesley. I'm thinking like, Mwesley. Mwesley. That almost sounds like Nestle. I. <laughs> oh my fucking god! Yo, I was what did you think it sounded for, like? I was sitting here for a hot minute trying to make the comparison, and I just couldn't because I was going based off of cereals. But now you got me fucked up all over again. Dude, when there is a liquid, or a food, <laughs> or a snack, never doubt the power of Toriyama. <laughs> <laughs> and he will he will find a way to spin that shit into a, a name for his characters. And to, to some degree, you have to respect them because I'm not even going to lie. When I first read this chapter, it didn't come to me then. It, it came to me just now. <laughs> That's impressive.
Thank you. <laughs> so she goes, and this is my boy Granola. Can we please take shelter here now? Of course you can. Manito's hype. So then Manito re reveals his name. Bardock says, Frieza's coming soon and uh, keep hidden and off his radar. He just goes, ain't you a Saiyan though? What's your ploy here? He's like, I just felt like it. That's all. I better be off. Keep surviving as long as you can. He goes, wait. Tell us your name at least. And then Bardock has an epic moment with his back turned. He goes, Bardock. Flies away. <laughs> yeah, right? And so then, we, <laughs> then, we're, then we're back to the present day. And, and, and for some reason, when I read Granola's lines, I read it as if he was, uh, uh, I think his name is, um, uh, Trunks is voice actor. I forget his name. Something Bale. Or something oh like yeah. That. I, yeah. I, for some reason, I just read it like I would Trunks. like, that means I'm only alive thanks to that Saiyan's mercy. <laughs> I don't know why I read it like that. And then when I was like, yes, sorry for keeping that from you. And then Manazo goes, and you, you're the spitting image of that Bardock fella. And he was like, huh? Me? And so this is the part where I'm just like, okay, are we now going to know? And when I mean we, I say, Vegeta and Goku. Okay, are they going to know who Bardock? Are they going to make the connection? Nah, we, right? we said this in our last episode. We both knew exactly how it was going to go. He's going to be like, you, you look just like him. He's going to be like, me? Nah, I don't know what you're talking about. Vegeta was going to lay down the logic. Boom. Another prediction settled. <laughs> we just, we, we just write the shit, guys. And we get paid nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> so... So yes, yeah, so just as Kai said, it's pretty much how it went. He goes, yeah, you, any of your kin go by the name Barda? And then Goku does the, the typical scratching his head, uh, confused but laughing face. He goes, Dunno, I was raised by uh, Grandpa Gohan on Earth, so I don't know much about the same. And Vegeta goes, Kakarot. He goes, hmm? <laughs> Bardock was none other than your father. And then as soon as he said, I say, oh, <laughs> I was like, I already knew, but oh, let's right. go. <laughs> oh, man. So, Goku's like, huh, my father? Really? And yo, freaking Granola had the funniest look on his face. He goes, oh. Granola shook. <laughs> He's like, get the fuck out of here. And then my knight was like, what a twist of fate. You're the man's son then. And then Granola. This is the son of the one who saved me? And then Goku's like, I wish I knew a darn thing about my dad, but I can't say that I do. Vegeta goes, in any case, your soft-hearted nature clearly runs in the family. I and lost I was it. like, yes, yes. <laughs> I was like, this is, ah, oh, man. I need more of this. This is where Dragon Ball thrives right now in this present day. They need more of this shit. So then... Of course, you know, they're telling this whole story. And then Granola's like, hang on, what about my mother? How come my mother didn't survive? <laughs> and then when Naito's like, well, you see. And then we go right back to the freaking backstory. The backstory and... of the... <laughs> <laughs> yes. So thank God these chapters are like 40 something pages because imagine this shit was like, like 15 like no way nah there's there's not enough info to, to be waiting around a month no yeah yeah i'm glad it's the way that it is i guess but so he goes so then yes we're back to the uh to the uh the the backstory and and i'm not even gonna lie this next part i was not expecting this is i will give them credit to where the credit is due this is something i did not predict this is something i did not see coming and when i saw it happening I was like, oh, that's kind of fire. Cause like the whole story is coming full circle, low key. And we'll get to that. So Manito offers to heal Bardock. He heals his arm, the arm that uh Muesli, Granola's mom, uh leaked. Cause you know, she like had the finger <laughs> guns. That's what Ceruleans do. And uh he heals him. And he reveals 
that the the really gifted ones can even restore your energy in the blink of an eye but unfortunately for manito it takes all of him to just even heal up a little scratch so he's among the weakling namekians he ain't like no dende all right Dende's out here putting that, in overtime for all these. Yeah, I was just characters. about to say that really puts into perspective Dende's strength as a Namekian. Yes. Our boy is, is OD. There's a reason he's the god of Earth, I guess. Yeah, for a reason. He's got like no no question. <laughs> so let's see. So then so then Bardock Scarta goes out and he goes, someone's near. So they're trying to hide. And oh look who it is. The heaters. And I was, like I said, not expecting this. I, I was wasn't like, expecting that. So, so let me, so let me get your thoughts on this shit right now while we're, while we're doing this. So, like, what, what was going on in your mind when you saw the heaters appear in this backstory? I liked it because I haven't liked them so far because they've had no place whatsoever in this story. Now they do. Mm -hmm. Now they do, and and there's way more purpose for them or at least for like one particular character in gas because like, that's in gas that yo because that's the dude that we've been talking about for months now hyping this guy up like we're like i feel like he's gonna be the dude that fight. they're gassing him up uh, yes they are <laughs> And I, I feel like we now have a little bit of an inclination as to what they might wish for. But we'll get to that. Because that's that's happens at the end of the chapter. We're almost there. You see how stressed Bardock looks when he sees it's the freaking heaters? Yeah, because, dude. I Okay, I feel like the heaters are like the straight up parallel to the Frieza people. Wait, what? What do you mean? Like, you, I feel like... In strength? Oh, well, no, I mean, I don't know about that. Then in I don't what? know about that. In what sense? Like in the sense that like, like, well, you have hot and you have cold. I, like, <laughs> that's just, I'm done. I, <laughs> like, because I mean, think about it. If they know how strong Frieza is in his fucking first form, not even his final form, right? Because this, this we're living in a timeline where during this time frame. Frieza was literally in his like pajama form. Let's just call it that. He was in his pajama <laughs> I like form. That. He was in his pajama form, and that's how he used to roll. That's how he used to roll, wake up out of bed. He didn't do shit. He, he would, stayed he stayed the emperor of the universe in his PJs. In his PJs, dog. That's how <laughs> it was for literally as long as people can remember. And it was only until the fight on Namek when the when Vegeta, the Ginyu Force, fucking Krillin, Gohan. See, it's funny. Like all of these motherfuckers. Like all of the, it took all of that for him to start dressing up. Right. But you know what's funny though? It's funny you mentioned the, the Ginyu Force, because I'm thinking, you know, like the Ginyu Force is supposed to be Freeze's right hand, you know, shit. And I I mean we find out in a couple a couple pages that you know these heaters are just poachers they're just space poachers you know but yeah at the same time if bardock out here is stressed they have to have some type of od power for that time for that time period you know yeah they have to be strong as fuck no question that's why yeah that's that's exactly why i'm making the comparison to the freezer race because like we don't even know what the freezer race is called is it has to do, do with something cool froze the 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 the, fr the frozers i don't fucking i've heard know. people you know, the... call them the arcosians the arcosians yeah i've seen what? that term tossed around a lot and it's even in games like xenoverse 2. interesting that's really weird so it's hmm. in it's in Dragon Ball stuff. I don't know where the name originated from. I didn't check the backstory, but I have seen the, you know, the race being called the Arcosians. And I was like, is that a play on the word Arctic? I don't. Has to be. Ha I mean, it has to be. But still, like, wh where did that come from? And why haven't we heard it in the series? Yeah, that. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, I don't. Yo, and even funnier to add on to that. I feel like this is the first time that I can remember ever that they referred to Frieza as a lizard. Oh yeah, true. That's yeah, so like, disrespectful. Like, yeah, 
Yeah, I was like, I never looked at Frieza like a lizard, even though despite he got that long ass tail and shit. But I don't look at Frieza like a goddamn lizard. I mean, maybe in his one ass, in his one big head, ugly form where it's like 20 head. That shit, that's the most lizard like he looks, I feel like. But hey, I mean, I guess, right? They're 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 cold ass lizards, I, I suppose. So I never look I never thought of it that way, but that's what they referred to Freezer later in the chapter. We're gonna get to that. But but yeah, so back to back to what's going on here. Bardock is stressing out, just like Kai said. He literally says the freaking heaters. So that's why I'm like, okay, they they gotta they gotta be on some shit, right? right. So as Kai also said, uh you know, they they're they're pretty much they're brokers. You know, they act yeah. as intermediaries for planets that Frieza has conquered. So they got their sights set on this planet. So they're treating like and then Minato's like treating our planet like something to be sold. And yes, exactly. And all y'all. And this is why I look at this the, is where the, I the head honcho as cell, bro. He said perfect. <laughs> <laughs> He said, they I swear to God, they better get Damon Mills, bro. They better, if they ever animate this shit, they better get him to voice this guy. Because he is a cell type. He gives me that cell vibe. Yeah, you've said that before. Mm-hmm. And right there, he goes, perfect. I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a meme of that shit. I'm going to take this, John. I'm going to be like, huh, this is, it seems like this is uh, familiar. And then put cell right next to him. So, so he goes, the Cerulean's and the Mechans are out of the picture. Get word to the Shigarians and start negotiating on a price. Okay. He's like, we're going to flee some good, right? Elik, an arm and a leg, and then some. That's what I was talking about earlier. That's where I said I had to just stop. Because I already wasn't taking this shit serious. Now we got the Shig Shigarians. I'm out. We, we, we may have the Shigarians. Back again, once again. Yeah. <laughs> the, in they, in they, the flashback they, I, again, once again. And the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah like i remember I, I, it was like a while ago like like a bunch of chapters ago when the, the when we, it was like during the part where we were learning more or maybe not learn i shouldn't say learning more but we were just kind of seeing the heaters in their element more and i feel like that's when we saw or we yeah we saw the the conversations with the shigarians in even happening in the first place surprised they ain't make no vegan race yet oh well there's plenty of time there's plenty of dragon ball to go so you never know they can make some totsu <laughs> <laughs> oh man plenty of names plenty of name ideas to conceptualize so this dude he's trying to sell this john for a hundred billion poles and he's, he's trying to stiff frieza by only giving them a tenth of the total he goes, most of Frieza's people are just in this business for the carnage. Battle crazy diehards without the brains to know a planet's true value. And they're, they're revealing more of the plan or whatever. He's like, as long as Frieza himself doesn't catch on, we're golden. Isn't that a funny pun? Yep. Because really, fast forward the clock, it, it's not going to be the heaters that's golden. It's but literally that's, Frieza that's gold. <laughs> that's such a dangerous move for more reasons than it seems at the surface. Because, yeah, we're good as long as Frieza doesn't catch us. First of all, Frieza. Thank you. Second of all, Frieza's not stupid. We've seen that time and time again. You know, he might make a mistake, but, you know, who doesn't? Like, Frieza's not dumb. So that's two. Right. But then there's the third part, right? Which... This kind of this kind of makes me wonder. It's like, y'all really trying to play your boss in his pajamas, mm. and you know this man has psychic abilities. Yeah, that's that's ballsy. That's Dragon Ball Z. That is Dragon Ball Z, son. See what I did there? <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Oh, uh, dude, you make it easy for me. It just, it just happens. This whole chapter has been a mess, but it's a great mess though. This, 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 this it's so much fun. This chapter, it's probably one of the best chapters we had in a long time. It's the funniest chapter we've had in a long time. Yeah, free. So, so. Oh, okay, yeah. Shout out. 
<laughs> to, to the king. So Gas has a line. He goes, one day we will reign supreme over Frieza's army. So you know what's funny? I got this thought just now. You know what? Let me save it. Just remind me later. It has to do with the heaters, okay? Okay. Because I want to get through this chapter. We're literally right at the end here. All right. Okay. So fast forward. Muesli comes out. Granola's mom. She goes, who's there? They pretty much kind of blow their cover a little bit. Then Granola comes out. This man woke up from his slump. He goes, mommy. And then he screams, a Saiyan. And that's when the cover was actually blown. And the heaters notice. And then Manito shuts his ass up, knocks him right back out. Right. He put, falls, <laughs> he yeah, put him falls, to sleep. Yeah, he, he went night, night. Fart off like that stupid little white he shot the shot like that and then of course they had to he kind of had to reveal themselves or he had to so bardock made a scene he made it look like he was in the process of killing them so then the heaters come over bardock takes manito's cape he puts it over his head so yo if they ever give him alternate outfits in games or some shit they better oh, have this one yes this 100%. Shit looks clean, son. He got the hood, hooded Bardock. Oh, fire. <laughs> so they come through. They see the scene. He's got his hand out looking like he's about to take out Manito. And there goes Muesli. So then the uh, Manito's holding Granola all knocked out. And and then Elik, I think that's what his name is, the main guy. He goes, and who might you be? And then Bardock just goes, I was just about to slaughter these survivors I spotted. He goes, ah, one of Frieza's work. You get on with it then. And he's waiting. He's He wants to see the killing. And he goes, well, having second thoughts. And he go, and Bardock goes, actually, the Namekian just used some strange power. Maybe it's worth checking it out. Or maybe it's worth checking out before killing him. And without hesitation, next page... Elik whips out the gat and shoots <laughs> Wesley in the fucking heart, son. Oh my like, god. I was like, so here's what I thought. I originally thought that, oh shit, Bardock is the dude who saved and killed his mom. But no, it was Elik that killed his mom this whole entire time. This man, Granola, was basically Uchiha. My man was sasuke -ed. He thought oh he was living his God. life a whole lie, thinking that he was about to seek revenge or vengeance on a set goal. And yet it he didn't never had to. He was fucking misled the entire all this fucking time, time. All this time and Manito's just now hitting him with the actually. Yeah. So then <laughs> then Elit goes, there you go. Kill the kid and take the Namekian and make it quick. Bardock gets pissed, clenches the fist, gas notices, and then Bardock does some sort of like explosion technique, but gas was quick enough to create a barrier dome around them, protecting them from the explosion. That looked like it could have caused some pretty dope damage if it went through. And then he goes, some nerve that guy, and then that gave him enough time to split, right? So then Elit goes, what's really going on? Is he working for Frieza or isn't he? And then he go, and then one the girl goes, what now? They gave us the slip. And then he goes, they, this other dude, he says, they might have been eavesdropping. And then he goes, this could put us into hot water. So eavesdropping in reference to them listening into their real plan in stiffing Frieza, right? So now there's this whole, you know, scandal going around. Which is kind of OD, if you think about it. Um, and now they're hiding. And by they, I mean, you know, Bardock, Renola, Dead Moesley, and, and Manito. Um, and he goes, so sorry, it's no use my powering enough to save her. Because he's trying to, like, you know, revive her. But, I mean, this man literally just healed his scar that she gave him on his shoulder. So... And this man ain't Dende, so he want, he's not going to be able to heal a, a, a gunshot wound to the freaking heart. So Bardock questions himself. He goes, damn it, well, like, what's gotten into me? And then Manato goes, don't know, but what's your next move? And he looks at, and he looks at Granola, maybe as a little source of motivation. He goes, the heaters are bound to come looking for us. 
and then uh, back to the heaters, Ela goes, they have to die. Gas says, let me go. All three will perish by my hand. And he goes, oh, fine, get it done. Meanwhile, we'll prepare for a meeting with Frieza. Make sure this mess is dealt with before he shows up, Gas. And he goes, of course. So then they flash forward to the present day. And this makes me believe that there was a fight between Gas and Bardock, and Bardock won. Clearly. Oh yeah. I'm at, I hope they showed us that fight. Cause I wanna see I wanna see my man cook gas. I wanna see him burn that shit. You know what I'm saying? Evaporate. He about to turn this John to oil. Nah, that's the same shit. Anyway, so he freaking he we shoot we have the the uh the ship that's flying around, which the heaters are on. You got the big H to indicate that if you didn't catch that. And Elit goes a trip down memory lane of that day 40 years ago. He goes, sure, sure. The one you fought back then was the same, right? And Gas goes, yes. And let me tell you, this dude never looked like Kid Boo more with this expression on his face when he said yes. Right. With his lack of a nose. <laughs> and strong eyebrows. Facts. Eyebrow and game goes, was on fleek. Definitely. 100%. He goes, I get it. In a way, your re own revenge is tied up in all of this. And Gas says, I will not suffer such indignity ever again. Choo -choo, he goes, I have grown strong. He goes, you sure have, but never hurts to have insurance. And he takes out the other Dragon Ball. And then they confirm that just one more and the set's complete. So step on it. We'll nab you soon enough. Dragon Ball number two. So this is where the chapter ends. And this is what... This is where I think that the wish is clear. That they're gonna wish for Gas to be like either the strongest in the universe or they're gonna just wish for him to be strong as fuck. But I feel like the wish is going to be for Gas. So I think that considering that, you know, the one that Gas fought 40 years ago was most likely Bardock because it was a Saiyan and you know the rest of them kind of took off but can't confirm just throwing it out there it was most likely Bardock right but either way yeah. can you imagine the pure hatred when he sees Goku's face dude and that's what I'm saying oh my god it's so crazy how how on repeat this fucking series is because it's always Goku. It's always Goku. They are all, <laughs> all these villains, all these bad dudes. They're all, they all these motherfuckers. They gotta, <laughs> they gotta take one look at this freaking monkey, and they something inside them is just like, oh, that's him. This guy, like, and they just, they just want this dude done with. I just think that in such, in such a crazy way, that they were able to write this story the way that they did to where they were able to involve Bardock. They were able to give him some, some more character development. And, you know, we got more time to see how he, how he is with, you know, other characters to interact. Right. And then he has this fight with gas and now gas is going to take that loss that L that he held. And he's gonna remember that shit and then when exactly as you put it the second he sees that this dude's about to be fighting against goku dude who looks exactly like the guy who whooped his ass it's gonna be it's gonna be game over and it's gonna it's gonna really like the, the whole the whole thing that guy's gonna be about is the difference is that i'm not gonna lose this time right yeah. but little does he know <laughs> mm. little does he know about the privilege of the goku bloodline Little does he know about the, the not even just the privilege, but the uh the plot armor. The plot armor. I mean, yeah, that's what Goku privilege is. Yeah. But yeah. No. Um. So I hate to do this because we're already so late in here, but I have to throw this comment out here, right? Please. So we were talking. I don't. I don't remember what how many episodes ago, but on one of the recent episodes, you and I were discussing the 
different types of ways that this story could unfold. And that was before this chapter came out, right? Because this really made a lot of shit clear. So yeah. we couldn't have known a lot of things before um, regarding, you know, like Bardock being, you know, the savior, how he did it, the heaters getting involved, all that shit. So I would like to ask you something. Okay. Do you think... <laughs> I mean, I don't think that this is how it's going to go down, but do you... Can you see, can you picture the possibility? That's the best way to put it. I'm struggling to like put this into words without giving it away. Can you see the possibility of Gas's rage of what happened, the amount of confidence he has in himself, in his, in his own power right now, right? And do you think that going along with what you said, that the wish would be for Gas, that he would bring Bardock back so that he can get his revenge? Because we were talking about the ways that Bardock could get wished back. Yo. This throws a whole other version in there. Oh, man. I understand why you said, I'm sorry for bringing this up. Now we're already late into the dump. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> I told you. Because all it takes son. is for me to say one thing. And here we go. Oh, shit. Here we go again. Yes. Yes. Nah, I hit you with the with a with a a more enlightened one. I'll be like, oh, here it goes. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Give him with that keen and kill. Oh my goodness. Okay, so that is such. Oh my god, that is such a. That would be something else that before you said that I would never have expected them to do. I still don't expect them to do it because I feel like it would be a, a, a perfectly good wish wasted on revenge for one person that doesn't help progress the rest of the heaters plot. However, if they were going along with that thing where, oh yeah, this is, you know, this, wi this wish is for you because you got, you know, done wrong by a dirty monkey. Here you go. The next one can be for us. I was like, man, you know what? This man's got to be so sick. What if he does try to bring Bardock back for the rematch? Mm. I mean, okay. So honestly, okay. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you two answers. Okay. I'm gonna give you the realistic answer, and I'm gonna give you what the fuck I I want to happen. What I want to see happen. I think the realistic answer is no. Yes, exactly. I think the realistic answer is that that those dragon balls are going to be used to be for gas in some way to make sure that they don't ever come into any kind of trouble because again like these dudes are snakes and they are you know they they, they they're trying to like one up whoever they they can and then and they're not trying to have hear it from anybody even to this point they're not even trying to hear, hear it from frieza 40 years later they're trying to just run their shit and maximize. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. But I mean, so, you know, we, we did discuss like the resemblances between Gas and Kid Boo. I mean, Gas could not be he he might as well not be in his final form. We don't know what he's got. He he could turn into propane. <sighs> okay, and this actually this actually reminds me of what I wanted to bring up before. Because if the if, if the heaters are to be looked at as the parallel opposite of the Arconians or the Arconans, whatever, the freezer race, the, the Arcosians, the code. Yes, Arcosians, right? I think that if they was to train, they would have a silver power up to fucking contrast the golden shit that Frieza got. What about platinum, though? Platinum Frieza all day. I, I don't still, care. I don't think they're gonna give it to Frieza. They do. They need to because that shit would, makes too much sense. We're gonna do see, gold I can too? see propane though. I can see that. Propane? Oh no, but see, that's kind of like a character name. Uh, that's kind of like I feel like that, that seems like more of a character name to me, to be honest. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, like honestly, it'll have to. It'll have to happen with whatever version in order you know for us to accept and see what actually happens but yeah to answer the original question 
I don't think it's gonna happen just because of right. you know the, pos- the 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 speculation and the potential of the what the real wish is gonna be about. But I can tell you this right now, if they wanna swerve me again and they wanna go with something that I did not originally contemplate and even think about possibly happening, then a hundred and forty seven percent fucking yes. I would love to see the wish be for him to bring back Bardock to then have his revenge because now he's stronger and now he has the upper hand, which is kind of unfair if you think about it. But but see, he, okay, I'm gonna throw something back at you. Oh no. All right? Check this shit out. What if that happened? He goes for the, he made, he goes to make the wish and then the Shenron goes I can't bring him back because he's not dead. No. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Where's my buttons? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Dude. I'm just saying like imagine if, if anything, if anything, I would say that Shenron would be like, "No, I can't bring him back because he would be brought, he would be brought back into nothingness where he got eradicated because we've we've heard that before. Mm. I mean, all they gotta do is wish him back here, you know. That takes like, two wishes though, one to wish him back and one to wish him there. At least that's that's how that's how it was in old Dragon Ball. I know Super be breaking rules out here. Yeah, they like kind of. I mean, yeah, they 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 be updating the fucking. They be retconning these rules for, but see, that's the thing. It could get so like they could do whatever they want because these are two. This is a different set of Dragon Balls with different rules. But we know that because there's only two instead of seven, they're weak as fuck. Look at the repercussions they have on Granola. Yeah. So I wonder what. See, that's the thing. If they was to take a make a wish for bringing somebody back, you'd have to question like what would be the cost, because. The seven star balls, you just got to find them all. You can pretty much wish for just about anything. You, you could bring a person back to life. But when it comes down to the two star, like just the two Dragon Ball set, these dudes, they have to sack something in order to achieve something that is, <gasps> is, that is outstanding amongst the power. Yo, what if he wishes to go back in time? Now that's a, see, now that's something that I as 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 conceptually dope as that would be too i don't know if that would happen because i don't think those dragon balls could handle it because i mean it just goes along with what i'm trying to say right now is that like this these 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 dragon balls for this arc was basically created to just be nerfed from the get-go for sure like like nerfed like powerful but nerfed because like I said, like there's there's cost to the shit. They're, like they're powerful, but they got the wishing level of a genie's lamp. And they're basically the death note of Dragon Ball Super right now. Because okay, you want to see everybody's lifespan and you know how long they're gonna uh, they're gonna last for, and you see their real names. All right, that's half your life. Right. You, you know, Granola pretty much just did the same thing, except the equivalent was he just wants to be the strongest in the universe. So I feel like because of the theme of this arc in general, like the strong, I don't even know if that's what they're calling it, the strongest in the universe arc or whatever, but I feel like that's kind of the impression that, that I got from the beginning. And that's been like Granola's like motive is to be the strongest in the universe, to fulfill his goals, to take out the Saiyans, to take out Frieza, all that stuff. I feel like it'll go hand in hand with this wish for gas so that way not only you know he'll be able to seek out his vengeance against saiyans or whatever um which ultimately will just be goku because he looks he's the spitting image of his fucking dad yeah um i i feel like that's that's what's gonna happen is that that wish is gonna be for for gas now to be the strongest in the universe so it'll be another one of those Vegeta and Goku just have to be the strongest in the universe for that second to beat him, and that's it. Especially if they're, and that's the thing, they're using the two-star Dragon Ball. So at the same time, it's like, I'm sure even with that trait, 
they will still be able to come on top because they was they was going they was throwing hands with granola when he was the strongest so it's kind of like the fights that we've been seeing so far have been almost um they've kind of been giving us little teases as to how outcomes of fights with this situation would go right now yeah that's the chapter that is uh all the thoughts right there is there anything else that you wanted to uh, mention or something? yeah i was just gonna say i don't think that either of those wishes one being the whole bringing bardock back two being the whole him going back in time i don't see either of those happening i just bring them up for valid reasons um the the bardock one because you know men's is sick that he lost and the back in time for the same reason but you know dragon ball has a very clean cut mold we see them reusing shit and how many times have they gone and changed the past like it wouldn't surprise me if they did it one more time see and that's the thing right if they did that if they went that route for whatever crazy reason you realize how much that was gonna fuck up because well maybe yeah, not yeah, it would create a whole timeline it would they literally create another timeline period it, it would and you're right but it doesn't mean <laughs> that they have to show us that timeline like they could mm. easily they could easily take it and again i don't think this is what's going to happen i'm just throwing it out there but they could very easily you know have man's like go back in time or some shit and then you know, in present day, Whis hits us with the, mm, there's a disturbance in the force type shit. And, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they go back, you know, Goku and Vegeta go back to try to fix whatever's wrong. And that's how we get Goku and Bardock together in the same scene. Because they all, you know, all of them go back to try to, you know, stop changes from occurring. And then heater boy still gets mad because at the end of the day it's still this carrot top looking ass saying that got his ass beat it was just a different one this time <laughs> yes yes man see that uh, someone pay us see, they should they should i feel like at this point we're robbed we'll be just being continuously <laughs> robbed of all of our fucking ideas at this point because these arcs these situations would be so cool to see flush fleshed out in you know a more like thought out manner because i like we're doing this shit off the fly and we make it sound Seriously. as great or as not as we can you know literally as we're doing this we're literally shooting the shit but um i do want to add more to that because that's such a fucking cool concept but then at the same time you kind of risk diving into super dragon ball heroes territory because when i think time travel the first motherfucker that comes to mind is trunks of course and if see because if you're gonna go if, if gas is gonna go back to fuck up a, a a weakened bardock while he's way stronger like okay cool you now feel bigger about yourself now because you couldn't fight him even because you got whooped the first time right so that happens. So then Bardock uh, dies, or that, uh, we would assume that, right? So then that causes a humongous rift because who's no. to say? Wait, hold wasn't. on, listen. You got, you got to hear this whole thing. <laughs> you got to hear this whole thing. Because who's to say that Gine would know what to do with Goku? Okay, who's to say that, oh, yeah, like she would just send him off? Nah, because she wouldn't. Goku would have died on that planet. Exactly. But that's my point. But that but that's what I'm saying though is, you know, he went to go back in time to, you know, fix his revenge, I guess you could call it. But that's where I was like, you know, Whis comes in with the whole disturbance to the force type shit and Goku Vegeta go back to that time cuz you know, like I've said, we've seen time travel more than once in Dragon Ball and the Goku Black one was messy as fuck. They kept going back, kept going back. No matter what happened, they couldn't change shit. So it's just like, maybe they get there before Bardock died. You know what I mean? That's how we see them all in that scene together. Bardock's not dead yet. You know, he's about to get, he's about to get lasered in the heart and then boom, sucker punched by his, by your boy Goku. <laughs> Dude. Oh my God. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. All right. So motherfucker you freaking like added another god damn like because i just be thinking like this, uh, like it sounds so good and then i just add more to it because i already had a thought 
It but sounds now I just so wanna... good that we have to finish out the idea and then it, we just get sad all over again because we know it's not what's getting printed. Mm, absolutely not. Like, there's like a zero percent chance <laughs> that zero. this shit is actually going to happen. But it's fun to talk about because this is the kind of shit that like if it did happen, it'd be OD. Like, no one would expect something like this to happen. But anyway, let me finish this shit. So they go back right gas goes back and then we disturbance da, 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 whatever they go back kai's vision happens the shot of all of them they're fighting together against gas um and that happens right so let's say we go with that route where goku does get to fight with his dad for that point in time this would this would be the retcon to him having that future sight of seeing goku defeat frieza because uh -huh. at this point, at this point, Bardock straight up fought with his son from the future. And that would give him a very, like, th this would give him purpose to even send Goku off or to even believe that no matter what happens, th they're going to be all right, you know? But that's, you know, that's only, uh, like, that there's a lot of things that would be messy with that because would, would, would Goku and Vegeta tell Bardock everything? Would they warn him about Frieza about to destroy the Saiyans? Like, what would they what would they be able to do? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. at that point, they might as well just stay there, take Frieza out at this timeline, so that way the Saiyans just stay put, you know? I don't think Vegeta's pride would let him do that. I don't know, man. It's, it's, that's what I'm saying doing this kind of a story you have a lot of questions that come up because you could take it in so many different directions and the what i was gonna say before what i just said now was i was gonna go with the direction of gas goes back goku and vegeta don't even get there in time or they don't even know in time and gas gets what he wants done to happen he kills bardock as a result because he's not there to send goku back or goku to earth goku dies with the rest of the saiyans there's no goku all this shit gets fucked up even worse than it did before vegeta never turns into like a good guy and that whole timeline is just a wreck okay yeah that's why i don't so, that's too much yeah it's, it's, it's a lot right because then then you have to wonder like okay since it's so fucked up how are they gonna try to salvage any of it they and wouldn't be when, able to because goku would have never gone to earth i know but that's what i'm saying like at this point in time for this timeline that's fucking like the worst fucking one that they've seen in a while they'd have to have some sort of time patrol and it sounds like again this is very super dragon ball heroes -y. But I feel like they would, this was this would be where they would bring our boy Trunks back to be like involved, you know, because he's like the time patroller guy. Like he's he's known to do this already, and I feel like that'd be a good re this would be a good way to write in write him back in there because the thing is they could think, oh yeah, like if it's all fucked up, we can just go over to that timeline and kind of like mess mess up these dudes that's causing all of this this havoc and bullshit that take place um and whatnot but little do they know um there's all this other crazy new powers that all these villains that were able to survive and be a thing that they go on about their business and they're just like od to the point where even the likes of goku and vegeta like that that, that wouldn't be enough like it's like holy shit like what the fuck do we do now yeah so it wouldn't that's what i'm saying it wouldn't be that simple it'd be very complex and it'd be very fucking all over the place and this is the problem when you, when you have these time related stories because they can be so od that it can go in any which direction and it can get messy really quick if you're not careful oh easily yeah but hey that's our that's that's our that's our uh uh episode of the week for you um i'm totally okay with this being almost a two-hour show just because of the fact that we missed out on last week so this is kind of making up for last week not having one i guess you could consider it like that i suppose 
um but it definitely brings a lot of uh you know a lot of wonder that if there's ever any kind of odd uh storyline or direction that you could see even slightly happening bring it to our attention because that shit could straight up just turn into an entire episode in itself and hopefully we do get enough so that way we save them you know per episode as well and again fullpowerpod at gmail.com for direct email suggestions comments questions or anything about uh you know in relation to that you can also hit up the spotify comments because that's a thing now apparently and you can also drop your comments on the youtube version as well so kai what else you got if at any at all any last things or uh whatever you might want to say to the people at home i'm good i think we i think we definitely got it out there <laughs> oh yeah we definitely did all right ladies and gentlemen well that's it had the about wrap set up thank you guys for listening as always please make sure you guys are leaving your comments suggestions and whatnot in all of the respective places that i had already said i'll leave the gmail for you guys one more time that's fullpowerpod at gmail.com make sure you're leaving a like comment share subscribe hit us up on the social medias join my discord and take care of yourselves may the power protect you keep it locked loaded right here on this podcast stay safe stay clean and stay the hell inside i'll see you guys next time